We're in the third part of our lesson for 13.3, and we're going to use a table to find conditional probability. So we have two previous videos for this lesson that are linked in the description along with the high school geometry playlist if you need it or become lost or confused. We've learned we can find the probability of dependent events by using conditional probability. We learned this in the lesson right before this one. And remember, that's linked in the description if you need it. So the probability of A and B, and let's say we know they're dependent on each other, it would equal the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B given that A has occurred. Conditional probability often applies when data falls into categories. And this table shows the approximate distribution of votes in Texas's five largest counties in the 2004 presidential election, and it's in thousands. So if it says 581, it's 581,000, isn't it? So taking a look at this, we have these five counties, Harris, Dallas, Tarrant, Bexar, Travis. We have our candidates, Bush and Kerry, and other, well, the other is the people who didn't vote for Bush or Kerry, they probably voted for an independent. So what's the probability that a voter from Tarrant County voted for George Bush? Well, when we go to Tarrant County and Bush, we see it 349. What we do is we total the Tarrant County votes. The 349 plus the 207 plus the 3 is equal to 559. So our probability that they voted for Bush, given that it's Tarrant County, would be 349, the ones who voted for Bush, over the total of all the votes in Tarrant County, the 559. When we do 349 divided by 559, we get approximately 0.624. Now, using the exact same data, what is the probability that our voter voted for John Kerry and was from Dallas County? So we look at John Kerry and Dallas County, and that's 336 from that county that voted for him. We total the Kerry votes, the 472, the 336, the 207, the 210, and the 197, and we get 1,422. Dallas County for Kerry was 336. Then we total the voters in the five counties. All the voters for Bush were 1,683. We add the total for Kerry, the 1,422. We add the other total, which comes out to 20. We get 3,125. Now, because this is in thousands, it's actually 3,125,000 for the voters in those five counties. So now we have our total of carry votes, how many were in Dallas County, and the total vote voters for all five counties. The probability that it was Dallas, given that it's carry, is 336, this amount over his total, 1,422. Which means out of 1,422,000 votes for carry, 336,000 were from Dallas County because it's thousands. So the probability that it was Kerry and Dallas, given that it was Kerry, is equal to this Kerry total votes, the 1,422, over the entire total of all the five counties, multiplied by this 336 over the 1,422. We can cancel out the 1,422 right here, can't we? So we end up with 336 over 3,125. We do our division, we get this nice decimal number, which rounds to 0 0.108. So because it said John Kerry and was from Dallas County, we found the Kerry totals in his column. We got the Dallas County totals for Kerry. We totaled up all of the voters on the entire table, and we multiplied this amount to the total carry votes over the total of all the voters. Okay? Now I know this can seem very confusing, 
but if you kind of look at each of these as a template, you'll be able to solve another one from your textbook by using these as the template. So here we have employment by education level. We have 21 to 24 year olds. We have our education levels as not a high school graduate. They are a high school graduate, some college, a bachelor's degree or an advanced degree like a master's degree. Here's the employment and this is in millions and here's not employed in millions. So what's the probability that a person with an advanced degree is employed? So here's advanced degree, here's employed, it's 0 0.104. We add that 0 0.104 with the not employed, the 0 0.041 and get a total of all of them with an advanced degree, which is 0.145. The probability that they're employed, given that they have an advanced degree, would be this 0 0.104 over the total, 0.145. It's this number over the total of advanced degrees. And we do our division and we get approximately 0.72. Using the same table for employment by education level for 21 to 24 year olds. And this one is going to be similar to the John Kerry in Dallas County one. What is the probability that a person is not a high school graduate and is not employed? So the first thing we do is total all the not employed. This entire column here, we total these all up and we get 4.038. All right, that's our total here. Not a high school grad and not employed is 0.834, just the top box here. The total of all the 21 to 24 year olds, that's all of these together. So, so the probability of not a high school grad not employed, this 0.834, given that 21 to 24 year olds are not employed would be the 0.834 over this total not employed 4.038. And the probability that a 21 to 24 year old is not employed and not a high school grad, given that they're 21 to 24 year old not employed, would be this 4.038 over the total 13697 multiplied by the not high school grad not employed, the 0.834 over the total not employed, the 4. 038. This 4.038 cancels out this 4.038 as a 1 and we're left with this and when we do our division we get this nice long decimal which we can round to 0 0.06. So you can see how totaling up the row or the column helps us. And this one is similar to this one. We can follow along with what we did here and use the information from this table to write this all out and solve this. So it's sort of like we're using that as a template to make sure we know what we need to do. Now take a look at this table. It says immigration to the United States, country of origin, Cuba, Ghana, and Spain. We've got 1990, 95, and 2000. So this table shows immigration to the United States from three countries in three different years, 1990, 1995, and 2000. So what's the probability that a randomly selected person is from Cuba given that they immigrated in 1990? First thing we do is total up the 1990 immigration, these three numbers, and we get 16,997. And the probability that this randomly selected person is from Cuba, given that, there's our bar for given that, it was 1990, we write this 10,645 for Cuba 1990 over the total of 1990 immigration. We do our division and we get this nice long decimal, which is approximately 0.63. So for this one, we totaled up all the 1990, that became our denominator, and the Cuba 1990 became our numerator. Now using the same table of data, our immigration to the United States, 
what's the probability that a randomly selected person came from Spain and immigrated in 2000? What we do is we total all the 2000 immigration, we add these three numbers in this column and get 26,439. Okay, that's this total. Spain in 2000 was 1,264. We total all the immigration, that's this column plus this column plus this column and get 65,846 for all of these three countries in these three years. The probability that the person came from Spain for 2000 was 1,264 and it's going to be divided by the total of the 2000 immigration. The probability of 2000 and Spain, given that it was 2000, is this total of 2000 immigration over the total of all immigration multiplied by the 1264 over the 26,439. These cancel out as a 1, don't they? So we're left with 1,264 over 65,846. We do the division and we get this nice long decimal, which rounds to approximately 0 0.019. So do you see what we did? We totaled up all of them. We totaled up all the 2,000 in the column. And we used that information to write our probabilities and we multiplied them because we had an and. Just remember that when you see this bar, it's given that, okay? And by this point, if you're still completely confused, my advice would be to go back to 3.3a and b and watch those and come back to this one because it'll probably clear up any confusion because you missed the first couple of parts. So here we've got the same table with immigration in the United States. What's the probability that a randomly selected person immigrated in 1995 given that they were from Ghana. Well, this one's pretty easy. The Ghana immigration total, we total this row, and we get 11,962. 1995 for Ghana was 3,152. That's our numerator. The total for Ghana immigration is our denominator. We do the division, and we get approximately 0.26. So, we have used this probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B given that A has occurred. Okay? So our next video is the last part of 13.3 and we're going to determine whether events are independent or dependent to absolutely make sure you can tell the difference. Then we're going to go on to 13.4a which is split into a couple of parts we're going to talk about joint relative frequency and marginal relative frequency. Then we're going to talk about conditional relative frequency. We only have a handful of lessons and videos left before we're finished with high school geometry. I hope you were able to understand this lesson. And as I said, if it was too confusing, go back and watch the two previous parts to this lesson to clear up any confusion. Keep trying, have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.